Okay, we've looked at angles. We hopefully feel somewhat comfortable with trigonometry now, ready for the next step. The next step is simple harmonic motion. What is that? Well, we, there's lots of examples of that that we could find that we're actually going to model. In, in the next video, after this one, we're going we're to model actual the swinging of a pendulum. We're going to look at the bobbing of a spring. How can we model those things through forces? Um, but we could think of lots of examples, plucking of a string, maybe the flapping of a butterfly's wings. We could even uh, model with simple harmonic motion. So how could we model simple harmonic motion? Well, there is one incredibly simple way of doing it. And so to do that, let's take a look at um, the sine function. So if you've ever seen a graph of the sine function, <laughs> because maybe that's what you look at in your spare time, it's going to look something like this. It's a wave pattern. Right? If this is a graph of y equals sine of x. Now, a couple things we should note about this. This looks quite a bit like a sound wave. A lot of what we're talking about here, if you're a sound person, you know way more about this than me. You can correct everything in the comments below. But one of the things, so the sine function gives us this wave pattern. So we've been, we used sine to do kind of a polar to Cartesian transformation thing in the previous video. Now we're just saying, hey, if sine gives us this nice wave pattern, couldn't we draw that wave pattern on the screen? Or couldn't we map the, an object's location, its y location, to the results of the sine function and have something move up and down? Notice something about this sine function. It doesn't look like this. <laughs> right? If it looked like this, this would be kind of like our, I just learned to program, bouncing ball example. Right? It hits the side, it, it goes over this way, it hits the side, turns around. We have this nice easing to the top and speeding up and easing into the bottom and easing out of the bottom and easing to the top and easing. Right? The fact that there's this nice smooth curve is something we can really use to our advantage in modeling different types of motion and behavior on the screen. So a couple things about this. One thing we should say is waves have properties to them. Um, two properties that we can think of is one is amplitude and the other is period. And I'll put here in parentheses frequency. Frequency is really just one divided by period. So let's look at what those mean. So amplitude, uh, it refers to the height of the wave, the difference between the maximum part of the wave and the minimum part of the wave. You might remember some stuff about this when we looked at Perlin noise, actually. Maximum part of the wave to the minimum part of the wave. That is the amplitude. Period is the amount of time it takes for the wave to repeat itself. How long is one cycle that repeats? And we can see here, how long is that? This, if we look from here to here, this, is, this section is an entire cycle of this wave. And so this length is the period. So a smaller period is faster oscillations. A longer period is slower oscillations. <laughs> Because I have no props or diagrams, I'm just doing weird things with my body. Okay, So these are the things we want to control. If we are modeling the butterfly's wings, is it a big amplitude? Are those big flappings or small flappings? Are the flappings very fast, a low period, or very slow, a big period? And frequency, by the way, is just the inverse of, of is how many, uh, how many uh, cycles in one unit of time. So this is a very high frequency. And this is a very low frequency. So, OK, so <laughs> that's all kind of in the abstract. But how does this map to a processing sketch? So let's think about that for a moment. Let's create a processing window. I'm recording, excellent. A processing window. And let's say we want to have this object just simply oscillate to the edge of the screen and all the way back, back and forth, oscillating back and forth. So what is the amplitude of this oscillating motion? Well, the amplitude we could think of as this distance from the center to the edge. We could think of that as width divided by 2. Excellent. What is the period? What is the period in this oscillation? Well, we say, how long does it take for one cycle? What is our unit of time? Like, how long what? Like, the, aha, <laughs> I just thought of it. In processing, our unit of time is frames. So we can think of how many frames does it take for it to get all the way to this side and all the way back, to get to do one from, 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 from the center and back again. So one full cycle we could think of in frames. Maybe our period, we say, is 200 frames. So now what we need is a formula. We need to say, if, if we are, um, 
if we are trying to get the x location oscillating with this amplitude in this period, how do we do that? OK, well, let's go back to the sine function. Sine of an angle, what is the amplitude of that of the result of the sine function? Well, actually, sine oscillates be between 1 and negative 1. The biggest number you'll ever get out of the sine function is 1. The smallest number you'll ever get out of the sine function is negative 1. Trust me, you're never going to get anything bigger than a 1 or smaller than a negative 1. So if we say the value of x in this oscillation is equal to the sine of something, and I'm probably going to run out of space here, the sine of something, if we multiply it by amplitude, if we multiply something that goes between 1 and negative 1 by width divided by 2, we're going between width divided by 2 and negative width divided by, by, by 2. So we can take the result of the sine function and multiply it by amplitude. Now, how do we get the period? Hmm. So in processing, OK, well, first of all, what is the period of the sine function? Well, remember a circle? Full rotation of a circle? Well, if we look at this, this is 0. What's over here? 2 pi. What's over here? 4 pi. So every 2 pi in the sine function, it repeats. Right? If you remember that in our polar to Cartesian coordinate transformation, it takes us 2 pi radians to get all the way around. You can think of going around in a circle almost as an oscillating motion. So a full period for the sine function, just the way it is, is 2 pi. So what we want to do is say, hey, if we take, I'm going to just make these parentheses down here, frame count, what frame are we currently on, divided by period, and multiply that by 2 pi, now we're going to have oscillation according to the period we want. Now, why does that formula work? Frame count divided by period times 2 pi. Well, remember, 2 pi gives us a full cycle through the sine function. So when frame count is 0, what's 0 divided by period? 0. When frame count is 100, what's 100 divided by period? 0.5. So we're halfway through the full cycle. When frame count is 200, 200 divided by period is 1. So you can see this is like a ratio of our current frame count to the period. How, what percent? Are we 10% of the way through the period? 50%? 60%? Multiply that by 2 pi, and we have this full cycle. Let's go see that actually work in a processing sketch. So here we are. I have a processing sketch here, which is all set up and ready to go. We have x equal to 0, and we're drawing a circle at x. But now we want to, map, we want to have that circle oscillate back and forth. So we can say x equals. So let's give ourselves an amplitude of a width divided of 360 and a period of, uh, we said, 200 frames. So x is equal to that amplitude times sine of frame count divided by period. And I'm going to run out of space. It's very sad. So I'm going to make this a little wider. I'm wasting time in this video doing that. But, uh, and um, I'm going to say frame count divided by period times 2 pi. So by the way, you can say 2 times pi, but there's a built-in constant in processing, 2 underscore pi. So if we run this now, we can see we have this oscillating motion. So it's as if there was almost maybe a rubber band, a spring. It might have looked better if it was moving up and down. This maybe looked a little weird, moving right and left. But you can see, here we go. We've got this nice oscillating motion back and forth. Very simple, with a period of 200. Now, that, that can be flexible. You know, we could adjust the period. You can see if I make a period of 30, it's going to oscillate back and forth much longer. If I make a smaller amplitude, it's going to just oscillate back and forth like that. So, so here's the thing. This is kind of, OK, a uh, little example mishap. Uh, I'm going to edit this back, and I'm starting now. <laughs> OK, um, so here's the thing. OK, so this works. We have this nice little oscillating motion, and we've really like, we've got our period down exactly mapped to frame count. And we have our amplitude. But, Honestly, like using this elaborate formula is not really that practical. And uh, what I want to look at over here, right, we've, we've written out this formula, which in kind of a messy way. <laughs> but really, I can just, I want to erase this part of the formula. And I want to go back 
and put these parentheses here and ask a question. What goes in there? So we have this, what, what we put in there, if we look over here really quickly, is like amp frame count divided by period times 2 pi. But what we really want in there, what really, what is that, what does that formula result in? It's a number that kind of goes up every frame, right? Frame count is 0, and then you divide by the period, and then frame count is 1, and then you divide by the period, and then frame count is 2, and you divide by the period. It would be much simpler if we just made up a variable called a or theta and said a plus equal 0.0, .0 run. And what is that? That's really angular velocity. And I guess you can't probably see the bottom here. Um, i got to work on that. I know I said that before. I swear I'm going to get better. Um, OK, so what's going on here? We could really simplify this example by using the concept of Angle is position, angular velocity, angular acceleration. And, and we don't even need, in this case, we, could, we don't even need acceleration, but we could see that this is a simpler way to do it. And um, with a higher angular velocity, we're going to have a shorter period. With a lower angular velocity, we're going to have a longer period. And let's take a look at that. So here we are over here. We're going to simplify this example. <laughs> fumbling, fumbling. Here we go. We're going to simplify this example. I'm going to uh, save it as something. Um, and I'm going to say, hey, you know what? Just put a variable in there. Call it angle. And forget about period. Make a variable called angle. And let's just say angle plus equals 0 0.05. Uh, oops, not a, angle. Let's run that and see what we get. It's pretty similar. Oh, it's too slow. I want faster oscillation. Faster, all we need to do is increment that angle quite a bit more. Let's increment it a lot more, and we can see, ah, I have faster. So you could control that oscillating motion in a much simpler way. And we could even add acceleration to it. As an exercise, you might just add acceleration to this. So this is incredibly simple, a really simple way of using the sine function to give us angular, uh, oscillating motion, simple harmonic motion. Now, what can you do with this? Um, we could easily probably make this video an hour and just keep going through example after example. And what I want to do just very briefly is show you a few additional examples of how you could take this a step further. And what I would suggest to you is, you know, look at these and try to recreate them yourself as an exercise. And you can always go and look up the answers. Um, they're linked, uh, the examples are linked in the GitHub repo. So first, first of all, um, one thing you could do to this is just think, okay, it's oscillating along the x-axis. What if I also have it oscillate along the y-axis? What would that look like? Well, here's an example of what that looks like also with many, many objects all oscillating so different periods, different amplitudes along the x and y axis. And you can see where you have these sort of um, different um, oscillating motions. So you could, uh, you could create this kind of, I don't know what to call this strange thing, um, by oscillating along multiple axes with variable um, uh, frequencies and uh, amplitudes. Another thing we might look at is, what if we took this one oscillating motion, instead of having it oscillate left to right, have it oscillate up and down. And what if we put one next to it, and one next to it, and one next to it? An array of them all oscillating up and down with slightly off, slightly off at a slightly different moment in time. If we do that, we get this. So we can actually use the sine function, essentially graph that sine function. All these are just oscillating up and down. They're just, this one starts first, then this one, then this one, then this one. They're all oscillating up at different points in time, and you get this kind of wave snaky pattern. Incidentally, if you do this and try to do it with Perlin noise, that's pretty interesting as well. You'll get, um, you'll get kind of a more random oscillating motion. Now, once you know how to do this, with what, where you start to get really interesting wave patterns is if you say, let me add a bunch of waves together. What if I take, um, let me just describe this to you. Uh, are we over here? Yes. What if I take a wave with this period and amplitude and take one with this period and amplitude and then take one with this, I can't do three. I don't know why I tried to do three, right? We kind of looked at this earlier with Perlin noise. If we add these two waves together, maybe we get this pattern. So one thing you can do is start um, having multiple oscillations, adding them all together to create different, um, different pa um, more sophisticated patterns. And I think I have an example that I can briefly demonstrate to you here. This is example 3.9 in the GitHub repo. So you can see, look at this wave. This wave is the result of a bunch of different random waves added together. I think if I, no, <laughs> I thought if I click the mouse it resets, but each time I run it's a different wave pattern. So you can see um, in this example the way the code has been implemented is we have an array of amplitudes and an array of, 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 of angular velocities. 
And the last thing, I think what, what you might actually really look at, um, which is maybe perhaps most relevant to um, the stuff that we're doing here, is take a look at this oscillating motion. What if you consider that to be the legs of an insect or the wings of an insect? What if an object that you have moving all the, around the screen according to some um, uh, 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 in two-dimensional space, what if that object could have its own internal motion? So it's almost as if its little legs are propelling itself around the screen. It's oscillating back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The faster it moves, the more it accelerates, the more those legs, the, 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 the shorter that period becomes. When it slows down, the period becomes longer. So I have perhaps <laughs> what I would look, maybe uh, offer is perhaps one of the lamer versions of this, but you can see an incredibly simple in version of that idea is that this, these objects are moving according to position, velocity, acceleration with attraction. This is the same example as in chapter two, forces attraction, but each one has this little oscillating dot that the faster that's tied, its, its period is tied to its velocity. So the faster it moves, the faster it oscillates. So it's as if it's kind of trying to like pull itself around the screen like that. So you could come up probably with something much more creative and visually interesting to that, and you could think of like lots of legs of a centipede. That would be, I would say, a good exercise, a kind of project for you. I know it was, we're going to look at a pendulum in spring in a moment, but you could really stop here and create a whole project around the internal mechanics of, of, of an object that oscillates as it moves throughout the screen. Okay, so uh, that ends this uh, video. That's a um, Send me some projects you make, and um, we're going to look at, in the next two videos, we're going to look at a pendulum and a, and a spring, modeling a pendulum and a spring.